Hello, I just have a short video today and this will wrap up the series on stop loss and trailing stop. Uh, on screen here I've got the trailing stop code from the last video. What I want to do today, because these previous videos have been about a fixed trailing stop points or fixed stop loss points, I just want to show two different techniques for changing those to a variable trailing stop and stop loss based on some kind of indicator. Uh, and the two types of indicator that I'm going to use. One will set the size of the gap for that trailing stop and the other will set the actual price for the trailing stop. It's a subtle difference but there is a, a difference there and I thought I'd show both to you. And because the trailing stop is really just a stop loss that moves, I'm going to be doing all the work on the trailing stop code. I'll be covering both MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5 in the one video so I will switch at times between MT4 and MT5 and I'll indicate when I do that. Now as I go through this, I'll be modifying the code that I wrote in the last video for trailing stop. And these changes will also apply to the video before that on the automatic stop loss. I won't go into a lot of detail on how that code works because it was covered in the last two videos. But I will include a link to a playlist in the description below this video where you can find both of those videos for MT4 and MT5. Now the first change I'm going to look at is to apply an ATR based trailing stop. So I've just created a new folder here called ATR Trailing Stop and I've actually copied the trailing stop code in here and just changed the name. So at the moment the only differences are that I've changed the name here in the comment and I've added this line. The size of the trailing stop is going to be varied based on the ATR of the just closed candle. When I say just closed candle I'm going to be looking at ATR for candle number one counting back for ATR periods. The reason for this is that the current candle for an ATR will be impacted by the size of movement in the current candle which will obviously start at zero when the candle first opens and then gradually grow. So the current candle is not a good one to use if you're calculating ATR. So I'll always be using the candle just closed for ATRs. And the first change I need to make, and this is applicable for both MT4 and MT5, I need to change the inputs. I'm not going to be using a fixed trailing stop points. I'm going to be using an ATR. So I'll just replace this and for an ATR I need both number of periods and I'm going to be just using a 10 period ATR by default. But I also need an ATR multiplier because I may not want to set my stop loss to be one ATR. I might want to set more and I'm just setting the default here to two and a half times the ATR and that's where I'm going to be placing the stop loss or the trailing stop. These inputs will remain and if you watched the last video you'll know that these are just here so that I can place some sort of trade to apply the trailing stop. They actually um, play no part in the trailing stop other than to set a new trade. And there is no specific strategy behind creating these trades. It's just going to place a trade anytime I don't already have one. But then the next change here, I'm removing this variable for stop loss. I used this previously to convert the points for the fixed size stop loss into a double. But because I'm now getting a stop loss from the ATR, I don't need that. So I'll just remove that line. And that's also applicable to MetaTrader 5. And then I'll remove this line as well where I actually calculated that stop loss. But now I change specific to MetaTrader 5. So this is the MetaTrader 5 code. As I said, I've removed that stop loss and I'll remove this calculation. But in MetaTrader 5, I need to set up handles to the indicators. I'm going to be using an ATR indicator. So I'll just set the handle up for that. And that needs an integer type for the ATR handle, which will give me a link to the ATR indicator and then I'm declaring as a global scope variable here the ATR buffer and that's where I'm going to be storing the values that come back from the ATR. And then the next thing I need also specific to MT5 is to set up that ATR handle. So here I'm just assigning the ATR handle being using the IATR function using the symbol and period from the current chart and just passing in the ATR periods. That's the only argument that I need to the ATR function in MetaTrader 5. And then I need to make sure that's worked. So I'm comparing if ATR handle is invalid handle, then I'll just print an error message. And by returning init failed, this expert will terminate then. If that's been successful, then I'm going to apply array set as series on the ATR buffer. That's this global variable. And I'm going to set that to true. That way, position number zero in the ATR buffer will line up with candle number zero on the chart and position one with candle number one. 
and it's just a little bit more convenient to think about everything in that order. Back in MetaTrader 4, the next change I need to make is in this on tick section and I'm going to calculate that stop loss value here. So I'm declaring a variable called stop loss and I'm making that a static variable and assigning zero to begin because I don't want to recalculate that every time I come in through the on tick. I only want to calculate it when there is a change of bar. So I'm using a static so that it will remember the value of stop loss each time I come back in. And then I'm calling this new bar function. We'll see that in a moment to tell me if I do have a new bar because that's the only time the ATR will change because I'm looking at ATR for candle number one, that won't change until I get a new candle number one. So if I have a new bar, or if the stop loss is equal to zero, which means I basically haven't set it yet, then I'm going to calculate stop loss, and I've got a function that we'll also see in a moment called ATR stop loss, and I'm passing in all the values that needs, the symbol, the time frame, the number of ATR periods, and that multiplier that I had in the inputs. And so that will calculate this stop loss for me each time this condition is true and then I have it to use in the rest of the code. Now looking at the MetaTrader 5 version, the code is very similar. I still have the static double stop loss which I'm initializing to zero. I still have the test of the new bar and the stop loss. But the arguments to the ATR stop loss function are different because all of the key values for calculating ATR like symbol, period and or symbol time frame and number of ATR periods are set here when I initialize the ATR indicator. So I don't need to pass them in again. The only value I need to pass into the ATR stop loss function in this case is the multiplier. And for both the MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5, I don't need to make any further change to create trades. So for anyone who hasn't seen the last video, create trades will simply look for the total number of buy and sell trades that I have for this symbol and magic number. And if I have zero trades for either one of those, it will just create a new trade. And that's just so that I have some trades to apply the trailing stop. And then all the work happens in the apply trailing stop and we'll see that soon. And the same functions apply for MetaTrader 4, although the code inside them is slightly different. Now, I mentioned the new bar function, so I'll just put that in here. And this is the same function in MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. All I'm doing here is capturing a static variable date time type that I'm calling previous time and I initialize that to zero and then I have another variable declared as now which is getting I time for the current symbol and period and that just tells me the time for the currently open bar which is obviously going to change every time a new bar opens and then here I simply compare those two if now is not equal to the previous time then I set previous time to now and return true because this means that I've opened a new bar and if that's not true, then I simply return false. So that's the new bar function that I use here, simply to know if I've opened a new bar. And as I said, that is the same for MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. And then the other function I'm using here is this ATR stop loss. This is different between MetaTrader 4 and 5. So this is the MetaTrader 4 version, passing the symbol, the time frame, number of periods, and the multiplier. In MetaTrader 4, I'm declaring a variable called ATR, and I'm using the IATR function, which has the same name as the MetaTrader 5 function, but it is a different function. It has different arguments. So for MetaTrader 4, I'm passing the symbol, the time frame, the number of periods, and which bar number I want to get the value back for. So I want the ATR as at bar number 1 for the 10 periods 10 default periods here. And then the stop loss is just that ATR value multiplied by the multiplier, which in the inputs I said was two and a half, 2.5. And then I just return that stop loss value. Now in MetaTrader 5, the new bar function, as I said, this is the same code, no changes there, but the ATR stop loss function is different. So remember, I only pass in the multiplier because I've already set the symbol and the time frame and the number of ATR periods. To get the value from that then, I use the ATR handle that I captured earlier, and I'm using copy buffer. So copy buffer takes the handle to the indicator, the buffer number that I want. So some indicators have multiple values returned. The ATR only has one, so I'm only using buffer number zero. 
but if you're using a different type of indicator you'll need to know which buffer number to get the values from. I'm starting at position number zero and I've just said I'm going to copy 20 values. Uh, I really only need two but it doesn't really hurt to copy a few more. Uh, so I'm copying 20 values and I'm copying those into ATR buffer. So ATR buffer was declared at the beginning here as a global scope variable. So it's all ready for me to use. Once I have that, that means that ATR buffer now contains the ATR values for the last, in this case, 20 candles. And I want candle number one. So I'm taking ATR buffer one, multiplying that by the multiplier that's been passed in here. And that gives me the stop loss value and I just return that. So this is the MT5 version of the ATR stop loss function. So now back in MetaTrader 4, once I have this stop loss calculated in the ATR stop loss and returned here, I need to replace this. This was the previous global value of stop loss when I had a fixed size stop loss. All I've really done is change the variable name there. So I just changed that. So now I'm calling the apply trailing stop, passing in the symbol from the chart, the magic number, and the calculated stop loss here. After that, this apply trailing stop has no further changes from the fixed size trailing stop, because in both cases I'm passing in the size of that trailing stop. Uh, and just to quickly go through this, but it is covered in the earlier video, I'm calculating number of digits for the symbol because I'm going to use that in the normalized double function here. And then I am calculating the close price, depending whether it's a buy stop loss or a sell stop loss. I need to get the close price, which I'm getting with the symbol info double methods for the bid or the ask, if it's a buy or a sell. And for a buy, the stop loss, I'm subtracting the stop loss value. And for the sell, I'm adding stop loss value to give me the stop loss prices. Once I have that, this is a standard loop through trades. Through all the orders, I'm checking that I have the correct symbol and magic number for this expert. And if I do, then I'm applying the stop loss. If the order type is a buy, I'm applying the buy stop loss if it's better than the open price. And I'm applying the sell stop loss if it's lower than the open price. And if they're an improvement on the currently set stop loss. So this is explained a little more in the earlier video. So you should see that. Now in the MetaTrader 5 version, exactly the same change here in the on tick section. I'm just changing the variable that I'm passing into the apply trailing stop. And the apply trailing stop here does exactly the same thing just with MetaTrader 5 position get string and position values rather than order values. So it's still normalizing the double based on the number of digits, still calculating close prices plus or minus stop loss and applying those to the position if it matches the magic number and symbol. And those are the only changes needed to apply an ATR based stop loss. Now what the ATR based stop loss will do, because the size of that ATR changes from candle to candle, it may mean that you're actually setting a stop loss gap that is bigger than the previous stop loss gap. But this function will still not move the stop loss further away from the current price. It will always move in the direction of your trade. It just means that there's a little more leeway as the price moves if the ATR grows. Now the next variation I want to look at actually uses a function to calculate the stop loss values. And to do this, I'm using the highest high and lowest low of the previous N candles. So I've begun again by simply copying the trailing stop expert from the previous video. And the first change again will be that I need to replace this fixed trailing stop points. And I'm going to replace this with the number of candles that I want to look at the highest high and lowest low. So I've replaced that with INP periods. I'm just setting the default to 10. So I'm looking at the highest high or lowest low from the previous 10 candles. And this change is the same for MetaTrader 5. Just as with the ATR, I don't need a global variable to store the stop loss because that's going to be calculated by the function that returns the high and low. So I can remove that and I can remove this calculation. And in MetaTrader 5, I can do the same thing. I'll replace that with the input number of periods. I don't need this stop loss and I don't need to calculate the stop loss. And back in MetaTrader 4, 
the on tick section does change here because when I'm looking at highest high and lowest low even if the current price moves because I'm not setting a distance away from the current price I'm setting a fixed value then the stop loss that I set at the beginning of this candle is not going to change until I get a new candle and calculate a new high and low value so I'll just insert the code here and you can see the difference so this is the new code for the on tick section first I have two variables a buy stop loss and a sell stop loss I'm making them static so that I can hold the values between iterations but also because I want to be able to initialize them to zero and know that I'm coming through for the first time this test very similar I've still got the if new bar and that's the same new bar function that I used for the ATR stop loss but then I'm testing both the buy stop loss and the sell stop loss to see if they're zero because either of those will tell me that I need to go through the calculation and then I have two functions lowest and highest so for the buy stop loss I want to call the lowest function and we'll see that in a moment and for the sell stop loss I want to get the highest and this will just give me the high value from the previous n bars input periods or the low value for the same number of periods and then in the apply trailing stop I've included this in the condition for the if because there's no point in calling apply trailing stop for every tick simply because these two prices will only change once at the beginning of each bar so once I've called apply trailing stop for that bar I don't need to call it again until the bar changes but I've also changed the arguments here because I'm passing in a price now I'm simply adding two values to the arguments here the buy stop loss and the sell stop loss instead of the single stop loss gap that I had before because by using the high and the low these two may not be the same distance away from the current price let me just get rid of that and the changes are the same for MetaTrader 5 so I'll just put that into MetaTrader 5 now and now back in MetaTrader 4 let's look at the highest and lowest functions and these are nothing more than wrappers for the inbuilt I high and I low functions so highest I'm passing the symbol the time frame and the number of periods I'm using the I highest function symbol time frame mode high so I'm looking at the high price periods that will give me the bar number that has the highest value of the high price for this number of periods beginning at bar number one and once I have that bar number I then need to get the value of that high price and that's the I high function for the symbol time frame and bar number the lowest function does the same thing but uses I lowest for the low price and I low to get the low price from that so these are really just wrappers around these functions and that will simply return the highest price for this number of periods or the lowest price for this number of periods starting at bar number one and these functions are identical for MetaTrader 5 so now still in MetaTrader 4 apply trailing stop I've changed the arguments to that so let me just change this I'm now accepting a buy stop loss and a sell stop loss independently and because I have those I don't need these lines to calculate the buy and sell stop loss value so I'll just delete those and the rest of the code then is the same because now I have the buy stop loss and the sell stop loss prices passed in if we look at the same changes in MetaTrader 5 so in MetaTrader 5 the highest and lowest functions are the same as they are in MetaTrader 4 I change the arguments for the apply trailing stop that line is the same as the MetaTrader 4 and then I can also delete these same three lines here just remember to add that new bar function this code is the same as it was for the ATR trailing stop and that's everything for a high low candle based trailing stop for MetaTrader 5 and in MetaTrader 4 I'll also just add in that new bar function so that this works compile that and that's everything for MetaTrader 4 so those are two techniques and I wanted to show the two techniques because one of them is going to be used if you have an indicator that gives you some kind of gap and ATR is a good indicator for that because when the price starts to move quickly it will give you more breathing room to your stop loss and the high low is also good because they provide a fixed point that doesn't necessarily have the same gap from your price whether it's a buy or a sell if you are going to use a function like that that gives you a fixed stop loss value or a stop loss price be careful that it's going to give you a price that is a true stop loss 
So if you use something like a Bollinger Band, you may find that the upper band is already below your current price. So you need to watch for those things and maybe build in conditions if you want to use them. By using a high and low, I know that the high is always going to be above the price and the low is always going to be below, so I don't need to worry about them. But just something to watch. So two techniques there, a short video today. I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, then please click the like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, click subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when we release new videos. So until next time, thank you for watching.